All right, guys, welcome to another episode. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very, um, very interesting topic in the area of protection training. This is something that I've been doing recently quite a bit with some clients, with some club members too, and with my dog. And that topic is the out, teaching the out. So teaching the out is a, a very interesting topic in protection training because there is this one very, uh, very predominant belief in protection training about the out, and that is the following. And it goes something along the lines of you shouldn't teach an out until the dog learns how to fully bite first or you shouldn't teach an out until the dog is older you shouldn't teach the dog an out until later it's something along those lines basically it implies that first the dog needs to learn how to bite fully and and with power before you teach it and out it's it's a very common saying it's a very common belief in dog training and protection training specifically i was introduced to that concept early in my career i believed it for some time and and i've seen it applied in different in different areas of protection training from police work to personal protection training to sport work and the reason for this belief is that somehow there is this belief that the out is an inhibitor and that the out will interfere with the bite so the belief is if you teach an out early during the development stage this will uh, this will inhibit the dog's bite now this can be true if you don't know what you're doing okay this can actually be very true if you don't quite understand what you're doing but if you understand dog training if you understand um what behaviors are and how to teach behaviors and, and 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 how to keep behaviors separate this is rarely if if at all a problem here's the traditional approach to teaching an out the traditional approach is you teach that young dog to bite to target to grip you teach him a lot of power very little impulse control full full power full full bite and then once the dog is older more mature very powerful in the bite then they'll start to introduce the out and what they'll do is not only will they introduce the out but then they'll introduce the out on a very high valuable item so you know they'll develop the dog the dog's bite in you know in a in a tug and then the sleeve and then the suit if that's the if that's the end goal and then when they teach an out they'll teach an out typically okay i'm generalizing here they'll teach an out off the suit or off the sleeve whatever sort of the the most wanted thing it is for the dog and so then what happens is naturally this does start to temporarily affect the bite because now they're letting the dog know, hey, now that we've taught you how to bite and how to love this thing and, and how to get really powerful with it, now you have to lose. Now you have to let it go when we tell you to let it go. This approach doesn't make sense to me today. I had some questions about it early in my career. And I have seen I have seen how ugly it can get when 
people take that approach. It just it doesn't make sense. Okay. Now, to some pe- to a lot of people, this this uh, you know this is a a theme that resonates with them. People go, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, why would you want to teach a dog to out when you know you want them to develop their grip and you want them to get powerful? That only makes sense if you don't understand what an out is. Because if you think an out is an inhibitor, yes, it will influence the bite. If you think the out is uh, the uh, the the opposite of biting, and and you have to like put them together, then yes, as you're teaching it that way, you're gonna have some issues with the bite. But I don't, I don't, I don't like that message. It's being sent to the dog. That's not my approach. I don't like it at all. And here is here is why, right? So wh- when people f- when people feel strongly about that approach, about that mentality, here is how they're looking at it. Imagine if I told you, "Hey, um, we're gonna teach your dog to sit and to down, but we're not gonna teach him how to down until he really, really knows how to sit." And we're gonna teach a very powerful sit. Like he he we're gonna do sit for like months where he can learn to sit here and there and sit under distractions and all of this. And then months later, then we're gonna teach him how to down. And only that, but here's what we're gonna do it. First we're gonna tell him to sit, then we're gonna make him down. Now, obviously, if you train dogs and if you taught a sit and a down, you know you don't have to do that. You can teach the sit separately and you can teach the down separately. Will they sometimes interfere with each other? Temporarily, yes. Temporarily. Okay. Sometimes what happens is as you're teaching a sit and a down, hopefully not in the same training session. Right? That, that, that that's a hor- another horrible approach. Which, if you have low experience, people tend to do that. They'll teach. They try to teach a sit and a down in the same session. You're definitely gonna confuse the dog then. But even if you do it properly, here's what sometimes happens: you're gonna tell your dog to sit, and occasionally they're gonna down instead, because they're offering this new behavior that they're also learning. All right. It doesn't mean that the dog is being disobedient. It just means, uh, you know, I'm still in the learning process. So let me offer this. So that's sort of the approach of we're not going to teach an out until later. So here is the typical approach, right? People will wait and then, you know, They'll teach a lot of bite work, very little impulse control, lots of bite, bite, bite. And then once the dog is, you know, on the bicep or the sleeve, wherever, wherever they are, then they'll go, okay, uh, now it's time to teach an out. And not only have they waited a month, sometimes even over a year before they do that, but not only that, but on top of that, they also expect it to be done in one session. That's no exaggeration. I've seen it. Or they expect it to be done in like two sessions, in three sessions. And then very soon, sometimes even in the first session, the trainer or the handler gets mad because the dog doesn't out. Where is the logic there? That doesn't make sense. Right, that'd be like me again going back to the down and the sit. I teach the dog to sit, and I never even introduce a down. Nothing. I don't even reward the dog. The dog when it lays down, and he sits for months. And I'm like, yeah, good job sitting, good job sitting. And then in one session, I start cranking him into a down. Are there dog trainers that do that? Yeah, yeah, there are people that do that. Again, that shows the lack of skill and the lack of experience. 
right? We, I wouldn't do that. I'm sure some of you guys, a lot of you guys, hopefully wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just start cranking the dog and go, all right, you got to learn how to down now. This is something that you realize will take more repetitions. So that doesn't make sense. So, of course, when you take that approach and you go, okay, we're going to bite, bite, yeah, bite, yeah, nice, powerful bite, very little control, full bite, full bite, yeah, awesome bite, buddy, awesome bite. Okay, now that you're a year and a half, now we're going to teach you how to out in one session. And they expect it to be done. Now, what's going to happen? Of course, if you do it that way, it will affect the bite. It will temporarily inhibit the bite. Because you're taking that approach. It's like you're telling the dog, bite, buddy, bite, bite. Yeah, full power, target, nice. Today, you have to let it go. When I say this word that you probably haven't heard before, and I'm going to make sure you lose. Today is the day you lose. And the dog goes, oh, shit. And then you go, okay, now bite. The dog goes, are you sure? And you see this happens. Of course, when this happens, then this further reinforces that belief Oh, see, this is why we don't teach an out until later. Can you imagine if we did that when he was a puppy? Can we? Can you imagine if we did that when he was younger? This is why we wait till later. So this further reinforces that belief. Of course, if you take that approach, you're going to have that problem. So that doesn't make sense, right? So here is the uh, here is the the approach that I firmly believe in when it comes to the out, and I'm gonna use a the way I explain it to to my club members. The way I explain it to my clients is this way: when people go, "Yeah, you know, we're having problems with the out," and I've taught outs, you know, to young dogs, puppies, older dogs, dogs that have problems with the out. Um. Here's the way the way I I introduce it to the handler because it's got to make sense to the handler, to the trainer. If it doesn't make sense to them, they're not going to follow through. They, it has to make sense to them. They have to have that breakthrough moment themselves. So I'll tell them. I'll ask them this question. I'll go, hey, what's one behavior that you are really proud of that you've taught your dog? And the answer is usually, well, he has a really nice heel. Or sometimes the answer is, he has a really nice recall. I like his recall, like really nice recall. It's it's something along those lines, right? Something that people, uh, trainers have put or handlers have put a lot of time into. Um, you know, it could be something simple. Okay, what's one thing that you really like that you've taught your dog? And for this example... Let's say heel, because that that is typically one of the answers. Heel, whether it's a flip finish into the heel or a, or an attention heel. I'll go, okay, an attention heel. Okay, let's go with that. I'll go. How long did it take you to teach that to the point where you went? I am really happy with that behavior. And depending whether it's a recall or a heel, right? The answer varies, but the answer is typically somewhere along the lines of. You know, it took a lot of repetitions. Or sometimes the answer is, oh, it took like several months. Or it took like a couple of months. And the answer is never, oh, one time. In one session, he just learned and I was proud. It was perfect. Like at the end of the session, after three, four repetitions, it was perfect. The answer is never that. And I'll go, okay, so uh, it took you several, several months or several repetitions, like probably hundreds. The answer is, yeah, yeah, it took a lot of repetitions, but, you know, finally get to the got to the point where I, I really liked it. I'm like, okay. So if it took you that many repetitions and that much time to teach a behavior to the point where, you know, it looked really nice, 
Why would it be any different for the out? The out is just another behavior. If you teach it like a behavior, you have to understand that it is a behavior that is worth taking the time to teach. It's a behavior worth spending time into. Another common one is when people go, oh, you know, like I've gone to this seminar and that seminar and and they couldn't get them to out. Okay, it's a behavior. It's a behavior. It it might not get done in one session and then you go, crap, I quit. I got to figure something out. So if it's a behavior, it is worth spending several repetitions and investing a decent amount of time to improving it and making it better. And now if, if you, for example, are really proud of your attention heal, do you teach it that one time and then like don't practice it for several weeks and then or several months and then like it's perfect every time? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it needs a little bit of a polish. It's the same thing with any behavior, right? So that's my approach. And when I do it that way, I see much happier outs because the dog understands it's a behavior. It is almost a pet peeve of mine when people want the out. Like it doesn't make sense. Like you, you're going to wait till the dog is a year old and then go, all right, we're going to teach you the out. I expect you to learn it by the end of this session. It doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. If you take that approach, yes, it is going to affect the bite because that approach implies the out just means stop. I mean, if you out just means stops, stop, then you're essentially just turning the out into a condition punishment. You're basically just telling the dog, out announces you're about to get your ass kicked. I don't want that. that, Then you're not teaching. You're just telling the dog, stop, you're going to lose. And as long as it means stop, you're going to lose, you're fucked. That's one of the biggest problems that a lot of police dogs have is they don't they have a horrible out because to them what does out mean? It means stop you're about to lose. Because as long as the out means stop you're going to lose, it will always be in the back of their head. And they'll go, "Fine, I'll lose this one." "Fine, I'll lose this one." And then one day they go, "Fuck, you know, I don't want to lose this one." Instead of the out meaning stop, I want the out to be a behavior. Once it's a behavior, it means go, right? So here's here's my approach to teaching the out. It is a behavior. Because it is a behavior that I'm teaching, it's worth several sessions, several repetitions before I am proud of it. I don't expect it to be done in one day, in one session. And normally when I when I help my clients or my club members or when I do it with my dog, we'll do it with something simple. It I, I would I I never teach an out on a sleeve <laughs> or on a you know, I, ne- I never teach an out on a jacket, on a suit. And that's the approach that a lot of protection people take. Like, all right, we're going to teach an out. Put the jacket on. Bite. Okay, now let it go. Bite. Okay, now let it go. Bite. Okay, now let it go. No. The dog is still going to learn to target. He is going to learn to push and, and grip. But on different sessions, I'm going to teach the dog the concept of pausing 
and I teach the dog the concept of trading because they're not the same. Pausing and trading are not the same. And some dogs do better with one or the other. I've trained the out on dogs that if you go, okay, let's trade, they go, nope, I don't want to trade. I want this one. I like this one. And so, um, you know, we have to go, okay, all right, all right, all right. you don't have to trade, but we got to pause, right? So what I'll do is I'll teach the dog the out on something simple. It doesn't even have to be a tug. Sometimes the tug is too high value. Sometimes it'll be like, uh, you know, food. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll teach the dog the concept of pausing by having a handful of food. I'll give the dog the food. The dog's eating it, right? Typically, I'll do this with the with the young dog. The dog's eating the food, eating the food, and then suddenly what I'll do is I'll close my hand. The dog will keep licking and keep licking it. At some point, the dog goes, where'd it go? And then, yes, I'll mark it, and I'll open my hand again. And then I'll do that, and they'll start introducing the out cue there, which in this instance, the out cue means pause. Additionally, what I do, this is me, okay? This is what I do. I will teach the dog an informal out first. It's like, to me, I, I like informal commands. There is an attention heel, and then there is a flat heel. There is like a, you know, a formal out, which could be ouse, and then there is like an, you know, leave it. That's just me. That's my opinion. The reason for that is I like to have a cushion. So I'm going to first teach you how to do it the informal way. That way, if, if it gets fucked up, we both learn from it and we prepare the state, we set the stage for the formal command. Usually we don't mess up though. Like, I mean, if anything, it's mostly to kind of let the dog used to it. So for instance, I'll teach an informal heel on the right side. And to me, this is my opinion again, the right side is informal. We're going to go from point A to point B on the right side. And then on the left side, that's foos. That means attention heel. So for the out, I tend to take the same approach. First, I'm going to teach you the concept of trading with the a cue that even if I have to say it a bunch of times, not a big deal. If there's a little bit of confusion to it, not a big deal. And then once you understand the concept, then we'll teach the formal out, the formal cue. So we'll start on something low value. First, you know, handful of food, close it, open it, teach the dog the concept of pausing. Then, you know, it'll be like a low value toy could be a ball and a rope it could just be a rope something low value and then we'll teach the dog the concept of pausing or trading now if you trade like a a hose or a, or a rope something low value with like a piece of food then the trade makes sense to the dog the dog goes oh okay well sure yeah i'll let go for that piece of food now the dog is learning okay pausing right or trading means if you let go of this you can have this or if you let go of this you can have this back let it go okay let's go right to it let it go awesome let's go back to it then the reward to letting it go is to get it back we'll do that with like the low value items then we'll bring out the the more valuable items like the tug and then after the tug, we'll go to the sleeve. When I'm on the sleeve, I'll start with the forearm. Then I'll go to the bicep if it's PSA. Once the dog learns how to out nicely on the bicep, then we'll go to the jacket and then the full suit. That's how I, I personally teach the out. And when I do that, I see tons of clarity. I have seen dogs that, you know, that they, uh, they've been brought to me, and and one of the problems is an out, and the dog, you know, is doing the bite, 
and when the handler says out or even before the handler says out the dog is already like looking like shit like oh my they're conflicted like fuck i don't want to i want to bite but i don't want to bite i want to bite but i know you're gonna kick my ass pretty soon and you see all this conflict sometimes the dog will even anticipate the i'll spit it out it looks really really crappy right and like the decoy now has to like play this dance and and try to like keep the dog very active to keep the dog from think from remembering i'm about to get my ass kicked when i see that that's that's all i say i'm like oh, you, you're teaching the out the traditional way and it looks like shit so when i take this approach that i just mentioned even in the dogs where the out has already been fucked up for them, I see tremendous improvement. I've seen I, I I've seen this already a handful of times, even with dogs that are very conflicted with the out. God, I've seen I mean I've seen it. Like you, you see the dogs biting and the bite just looks like ass because they're biting all shallow. They're they're nervous because they're thinking, crap, when I bite, it's gonna be a hand, a few seconds. And then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna hear out, and that means I'm gonna get my ass kicked. And they get dirty, right? They like they'll out and then they'll rebite, and then of course they get their asses kicked again. It's just so much conflict. So when they go, okay, can we fix that? Yes. But we gotta go back all the way to a tug. And not five people go, huh? And you know, they, they get this up. I'm like, no, they trust me. Now this has happened with a handful of, of clients handful of club members this isn't just one person and like no we got to go back to a tug we're going to teach the dog what this concept means and we're going to teach them that the the out is a winning exercise not a losing exercise we're going to teach them that out means pause or trade not just stop and then once the dog learns that concept on a tug then we're going to go to the sleeve and we're going to hold the sleeve like a tug at first then we're going to wear it on the forearm then on the bicep then we're going to go to the suit and on the suit i'll even start on the, on the forearm and then we'll go to the bicep and then by the time the dog starts to figure it out it's easy because by then now some dogs make the progress faster than others some dogs learn it pretty quickly some dogs need a lot more repetition a lot more sessions but by the time we the result is always the same by the time we get to that point where the dog goes oh i get it out doesn't mean lose out means i i it's just a behavior and like any behavior there's a reward for it for doing it If you teach it that way, if you teach it properly. Now, it doesn't mean I don't use pressure. I, I will use pressure, but it's very reward-oriented. I don't go out it or I'm going to kick your ass. It's more like, hey, if we do this, this is what you get to have. And then the dog is way, way better. Now, that approach works on young dogs if i take that approach too it never affects the bite because again I'm, I'm not telling the dog out means don't bite okay I'm, I'm telling the dog that this one behavior means you get you get to bite again you get to have it again i'm gonna go back to that example of the sit and the down I can teach a dog to sit in one session and in a different session, I'm going to teach him to down. He doesn't need to learn to sit first on cue before I teach him to down. I can do these separately. I can teach a sit and I can also teach a heel in a different session. I don't have to go, oh crap, first you got to learn how to sit. Then after months of that, then we're going to teach you how to heal. That doesn't make sense either. So we go, we're going to teach him in different sessions, but you're going to learn these. These are winning behaviors one doesn't have to affect the other 
Now, once we teach that, does that does it mean that you're all good to go? No. How many times have you told your dog to sit once they really know how to sit and occasionally they go, huh, what'd you say? Or occasionally they go, no, I'm, I'm not going to sit. I'm going to do something else. Right? That's every behavior. It's no different with the out. It's just another behavior. Sometimes you tell your dog, sit, and they go, no, I don't want to. And you're going to go, well, too bad, you have to. And then they go, fine, I'll sit. It's no different with the out. Right, people go, I've seen this happen too. Like the dog makes progress, makes pro- an amazing progress. And the dog goes, man, I'm out. And yeah, that, that's awesome. I, I get it. I get it, Will. I get the behavior. And the handler gets all happy. Yeah, he's getting it. And then we have one session every now and then where we say out and the dog goes, nope. And then the handler gets all discouraged. Like, well, I, I don't get it. I thought he knew the out. I'm like, dude, do, does your dog sit Every single time you tell them to sit, even once they know how to sit? No. Occasionally, they need a little reminder, right? Why would it be different for the out? It's amazing to me how people hold their dogs to an unrealistic standard when they're teaching an out. <laughs> they, wanna, they want the dog to learn in one session. And they want the dog to, once they quote-unquote learn it, they want the dog to perform it like every single time. They would never use that logic for something else. So use your logic. Okay? So remember, an out is a behavior. If you want to teach an out, you have to be willing to put in the reps, invest the time, because it's a behavior. You have to proof it, because it's a behavior. Anything that you would teach a dog, a sit, a down, a heel, a recall, All the things that you have to do with those behaviors, spend the time, generalize, proof it, remind it, maintenance mode, all of that applies to the out. And just like your dog needs a reminder every now and then for a sit, it also needs a reminder every now and then for the out. Sometimes the dog goes, no, I don't want to out. So use the logic, okay? It is just a behavior. So I just wanted to go over that uh, again because it's something that I've been working on a lot lately. I just started teaching Cinco the formal out. He's been learning the concept, learning the concept of pausing and trading uh, earlier when he was younger, but now he's starting to learn the formal out. On a toy, of course, I'm following the same procedure that I went over because it makes sense to me. It's it's not a strategy. Like it's not like oh, this is my way. No, I just apply the same logic to teaching an out that I apply to teaching a sit or any other behavior for that matter. So, remember, the out is very important. It will not if you teach it this way it will not interfere with your bite if you're smart about it if you know how if you know what you're doing obviously if you don't know what you're doing if if this episode went over your head um definitely you're not maybe you're not ready for that maybe you need somebody to help you out with it hopefully somebody who is not a traditional out trainer that goes hey we're going to teach him in one session no, well, don't teach him that yet. And that doesn't make sense. Like, again, I could rant on that for a while, but um, we're just gonna wrap it up on that one. Keep the episode nice and short. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook. Check out my four books on Amazon. Look up William Garrido G A R R I D O 
on the Amazon search bar and check out the books there. I have a um, working dog course on my website, Doctoring is My Passion, and I've been working on exclusive content. So I'm going to be opening a membership area on the website very soon. So you can access that for a very low monthly fee. It'll be exclusive content. I'm going in depth in a lot of things. I'm going to be, uh, well, I, I've already I've already been uploading a bunch of videos on there. You know, very in-depth, detailed um, videos and how-tos on e-collar training. On uh, the out, it's going to be on there too. And, uh, you know, obedience, a bunch of stuff. So more of a behind-the-scenes look than what I have on YouTube. YouTube, my YouTube channel has a lot of very informational videos. But I'm going to go much, much more in-depth with a lot of clarity, a lot of details on the membership area to provide you guys with the most amount of value and to help you guys out. So stay tuned with that. Dogtrainingismypassion.com. It's going to be on there. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.